I want to talk a little bit about uh, wages and inflation. So, uh, as you said, wages are rising faster than is consistent with a 2% inflation rate, assuming reasonable productivity. You said in November that wages are not the principal cause of prices going up. But for many workers, real wages have been falling lately. So I wonder, isn't there room for wages to rise a bit faster so workers can make up lost ground? And what level of wage increases do you think is consistent with a 2% inflation target? Okay, so um, I guess I would start by saying that the, the inflation that we saw at the beginning of this episode in back in March of 21 was not really related to wages at all. It was related to tightness in, in goods markets, largely due to supply chain issues. Over time, though, um, inflation has now spread broadly through the economy. And while I would still say that the inflation we're seeing now is not, is not principally related to wages, we think that wage increases are probably going to be a very important part of the story going forward, particularly as it relates to that third category of of core services X housing. So, um, so we think it is an important thing going forward. And ultimately, in the service sector in particular, where, where uh, wages and benefits are, are by far the largest cost, um, wages need to go up. We, and of course, we want wages to go up. We want wages to go up strongly, but they've got to go up in a, at, at a level that is consistent with 2% inflation over time, making basic assumptions about productivity. Um, and I would so if you look at the principal uh, wage measures that we look at, uh, I would say that you're one and a half or two percent above that with with current wage increases. So, particularly the employee, employment com, employee Cost employment index. compensation index and the average hourly earnings index. Look at those two. It's about one and a half percent higher than what would be consistent, making various adjustments, including for productivity, from nominal wages. So, and as we look at the labor market today, and including today's, uh, today's JOLTS data, what you see is a labor market that there's a real imbalance between supply and demand. There are 1.7 job openings for every unemployed worker, everyone looking for a job. Um, there are the, the so-called uh, jobs workers gap is about 4 million, meaning if you, if you look at, at all of the available jobs, including people who are working, and then look at people who are in the labor force or looking for a job, uh, there's a 4 million shortfall. So you're in that world, and you know, we think uh, that we, we, there's a job for, for moderating demand in there and getting the labor force back into balance. You don't think that there's a possibility that we, could, we should have a period of catch-up of wage increases above the sustainable level and that businesses with relatively fat profit margins can absorb some of that without passing it through? So that, that's a, you know, the question of um, the, the, the worker share of profits and that kind of thing is, is not really related to this. Right now, people's wages are being eaten up by inflation. So to be, what you want to do is you want to have inflation stable and then have a very strong labor market where the biggest wage gains are going to the people at the bottom end of the spectrum. And we had that at the end of the very long expansion that ended with the pandemic. That's not what we have now. Now, for most workers, uh, for most workers, the increases they're getting in wages are being eaten up by inflation. That's actually not true at the bottom end, where, where wage increases are, are higher than inflation. And that's a good thing. But if you want to have sustainable, strong labor market, where real wages are going up right across the wage spectrum, especially for people at the lower end, you've got to have price stability. And until we restore that, we can't, we can't get back to that place where we, where we kind of were for the two years before the pandemic hit. And did you take, uh, when you looked at today's JOLTS data, which measures the vacancies and quit rates, were, did you find that encouraging? More, more or less in, in line with expectations, but that's... It's going the right direction, that, That's though. a good thing, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, I guess job openings came down by several hundred thousand to, to, uh, to where they are now. And, yeah, that, that's a positive thing. As, as you know, the, the relationship between uh, job openings and unemployment is, is, is a very fraught one. And... Job openings right now, are, compared to unemployment, are at their all time, near their all-time high levels. So it has been our view that there's a possibility that in this highly unusual situation in the labor market, labor market could come back into balance to some extent through a decline in job openings, and that there's been a typical relationship between increasing unemployment and declining job openings, but that our thinking has been, and many labor economists share this, that you could get 
a decline in job openings that wouldn't produce the same increase in un a smaller increase in unemployment than is typically the case looking back in history because of the very outsized level of job openings. And we, we've kind of seen that so far, but it, it's way too early to say that that'll, that that'll so, work. So um, traditionally the Fed looked at the unemployment rate as a measure of labor market tightness, and we've seen recently that that may be misleading unemployment rate is still very low, and as you pointed out, uh, that job vacancies is starting to come down.